it's a good time to start let's begin our um, next session where we are going to talk on the remaining things in your basics in fact the last thing that is remaining that we are going to talk that is file permissions and uh, then we'll move to our next chapter so in our previous classes we have finished a few of the basics like how to create a file how to copy a file how to move a file same things with directory creating a directory copying moving then we saw how to create soft link hard link we saw how to work with vi editor we saw um, how to work with your filter commands like grep less more head tail said all these things and uh, let's now finish the last part actually remaining in our basics that is file permissions so in our previous class while doing practicals let me log in in that particular terminal I log in into our machine and <clears throat> let me give my username and password Okay, so in the last sessions we saw that when we run the command ls minus l in any file, it start with type of the file, then it would show me what permissions does this file carry. Either it is a file or it is a directory, it would show me the file permissions. So basically these file permissions will derive access control like what people can do with this file can they edit the file or not can they overwrite this file or not or can they remove this file or contents of the directory or not so basically there are three members to whom you can apply the permissions those are owner of the file which is also called as user or the next person is the group to which this particular file belongs to then rest of the others will be called as other the one who has created the file will be called as owner and the file can also belong to a particular group so that would be the group and the one who is not the file owner who is not the group owner will come under others category the one who is not the owner the one who does not belongs to group will comes under others category so these three fellows you can apply permissions now what kind of permissions you can apply you can apply three permissions read write and execute now what is the role of read write execute on a file I'll explain you but first let's try to understand that these three permissions how I can identify that which permission belongs to owner or user which permission belongs to group and which belongs to other let me take you to our terminal now over here you see that there is a file hard over here you see that there is read write hyphen the first three permissions belong to owner user whatever you call it then the next three permission belongs to group and the final three permission belongs to others so this is how I can find out that owner is having what permissions group is having what permissions and others are having what permissions now what does this read write execute means what is the impact they are going to create on a file let's try to talk on that so if read permission is applied on file that means the file can be open people can read that file either owner can read the file or groups can read the file group members or others can read the file if read permission is applied on directory 
that means people can see the content of the directory they can run ls command over directory they can find out how many date how many files and directories are there inside the directory if a file is carrying write permission that means people can write the data inside it they can edit the data append the data or even they can delete the file whereas if write permission is applied on a directory people can add the files or directories inside that directory or they can delete the contents of the directory or they can rename the contents of the directory almost same if there is read permission on a file you can read the file in directory you can read the content if there is a write permission on the file you can make changes in the file edit it or you can delete it if you have write permission on a directory then you can add contents to the directory or you can delete the contents of the directory almost that read and write on file and directory have similar impact but when it comes to execute it has totally different impact on file as well as directory for example if execute permission is applied on a file and execute permission is needed for a file only if this file is a script generally what happens guys that whenever you have a script you want to execute it then that script need to have an execute permission and without execute permission the scripts cannot be run so if the file is a script then you need to apply execute permission on a file otherwise this file cannot be executed this script cannot be executed whereas on the directory if you don't have execute permission then people cannot enter inside directory so in order to go inside directory we need execute permission but on a file it is kind of optional command where you know it is needed only if the file is a script if the file is not a script then execute permission is just an option does not have great impact but on a directory it is one of a very very important permission without execute permission you cannot enter into a directory so these are the roles of your read write and execute on different levels either on files or on directories now how to apply this permission let's try to talk on that to apply this permission we've got two methods one is symbolic method symbolic method is using symbols or alphabets where u represents user g represent group and o represent other and the command to change the permission is chmod change mode for whom would you like to change it that means you can change it for a user you can change it for a group or you can change for others if you are adding a new permission to existing permission you can use plus if you are removing a permission from existing permission minus if you are totally changing the permission or modifying the permission then equals followed by what permission would you like to apply on which file or on which directory so let's see that how to implement it let us go back to our terminal i've got a file called out let me check out the permissions for out ls hyphen l out you see it says that the owner is having read write permission group is having read permission others are having read permission i want to totally modify this permission my requirement is for owner or user 
I want to give full permission. For group, I want to give read and write permission. And for others, I'd like to give read only. To change this permission, I'll go with the command chmod. I want to change for user. So I'll say user. I want to totally modify the permission. So I'll say equals. I want to make it read, write, execute, comma. For group, I'd like to give read as well as write. And for others, I'd like to make it read only. For a file called out. Now, if I say ls minus l out, you can see for user, it is read, write, execute. For group read write and others it is read unchanged. There is let us continue. So as you saw that I have now able to change the permission of my file to read write execute read write so and so now assume guys what I wanted to do out is uh, I would like to add some permission to one fellow and I'd like to remove the permission from other fellow for example for user I want to remove write permission for group I want to add execute permission and for others I want to add execute permission so I want to remove write from user I want to add execute to group as well as other so how I'm going to do that let me show you this time I'll show you how to use that plus and minus so I'll say chmod for user I want to minus write permission whereas for group I'd like to add execute permission and for others I'd like to add execute permission for a file called out so when I hit enter you see that for user write permission has been taken and for group write perm execute permission has been added and so for the other let's say I want to remove a common permission execute from all the three from users group and others all the three I want to take away execute permission to remove the same permission from all you can say chmod from users group and others I'd like to minus a permission called execute from a file out if we check out you see all of them has now not having execute permission similarly you can apply the same permission to all U G O plus whatever you want to do uh, let's say you want to grant full permissions on this particular file read write execute read write execute read write execute we can say chmod u g o modify the permission for all to read write execute on a file out now if you check out ls minus l out you see it is carrying full permission read write execute read write execute read write execute similarly you would like to wipe out whole permissions no read no write no execute to any of them I want to make nil permission null permission to make it zero I'll go with chmod 
for users, group and others. I'd like to give no read permission, no write permission, no execute permission for a file called out. Now if you check out ls minus l, you'll see it is not having any permission whatsoever on this particular file. So like that you can modify a permission for a particular file or a particular directory. A question coming in from Michael. If a directory contains file and if I want to change the permission for a directory and the file at a time, how could I do that? Exactly the next thing what I was supposed to tell you is the same thing. So the thing is, assuming that I have one directory, for instance, I have a directory called Musab or test. Let me see what is the data inside it. There is a file, my file, a good example. I have a directory test, I have a file. Check the permission of a directory ls minus ld test and check the permission of the content ls minus l test. So you see there is a directory called test which is having read write execute read execute read execute whereas there is a file called test there is a file inside it I'm sorry my file which is having read write read and read so I'd like to change the permission of a directory and a content if I only change the permission of a directory that is not going to impact the file inside it for example I'll say chmod for user I want read and execute permission whereas for group I want read and write permission and for others I want read and execute permission on the directory called test so when I hit enter and when you run ls minus ld you see it is changing exactly what permission you have given on directory but when you check ls minus l the contents of the directory you see it is not yet changed it is having the same permission what it was having previously so in my scenario what I want to do is I want to change the permission exactly the same way for the parent directory and the child's inside it and how I'm going to do that this concept is called as recursive concept so let me show you how to use that recursive option for example I'd like to change the permission in this fashion I want to give user full permission read write execute I want to give group read and execute permission and I want to give others read only permission to a file called or to a directory called test but our requirement is we want the contents of test folder to also have same permissions then you need to use minus capital R where R stands for recursive and it will make sure that every file inside that folder should get the same permissions what we are changing to the parent directory so when I hit enter you do ls hyphen ld and test you see it is carrying read write execute read execute and read check the contents ls hyphen l test there is a file inside it which is also carrying exactly the same permission so one question coming in from Manzoor recursive permissions are effective for both file and directory or just directory inside the parent directory it is effective for both for parent as well as the files inside it as you see on the screen 
that the parent directory is carrying same permission and the child's are also having the same permission if it is one file or if it is more files so like that what we can do is we can assign recursive permission or the same permission to the parent and the child in any fashion or whatever permissions we want to apply now this was the symbolic way of assigning the permission by using symbols users group others or rwx etc etc we've got one more simple technique to assign permission which many of the people prefer and that technique is called as numeric method so this numeric method carries numbers so what are those numbers in numeric method what happens is your read write execute these three things have been given a number and what is that number let me tell you for read it is given 4 and for write we have a number called 2 and for execute we have a number 1 so basically we have three numbers 4 2 and 1 where 4 means read 2 means write and 1 means execute assume i wanted to apply certain permission on a file then how to do this calculation let me take help of a notepad to explain you better let me open notepad assume i've got a file like in our scenario we have a file called out on this file i need to apply permissions for user i want to give read write execute for group i want to give read write and for others i want to give read permission or whatever different permission you would like to assign so how i am going to do that calculation read as i've told you stand for 4 and uh, write stand for 2 and execute has value 1 so what i need to do is i need to do a simple addition 4 plus 2 plus 1 so my final answer would be 7 if i wanted to go for read and write then i'll say 4 plus 2 Four for read, two for write. So my answer would be six. Followed by only if I wanted to go for read, then I don't have to do any calculation. It would just stand for four. So now I have to use a command chmod, and I'm going to use seven six four. So seven stands for read, write, execute. and first permission belongs to user second 6 belongs to group and it would be 4 plus 2 that is 6 finally for others 4 so a simple addition what we need to do where we just need to remember that read is 4 write is 2 and execute is 1 that's it just do an addition and apply this permission so let me show you that i've got a file called out if i check out as of now out is not having any permission as we have removed it now let me apply it to apply i'll go with the command chmod as we have decided 7 that is full permission 6 read and write permission 4 read permission on a file called out now if you check out for 
owner or user you've got full permission for group only read write and others read only so like that we can use this number in various combination whatever you like you can just give it and you can modify it for instance you want to give full permission to this particular file then the command would be chmod 777 777 is full permission on a file called out as you see all three members are having full permissions user group and other assume you want to take away whole permission no read no write no execute then you can run chmod 000 on a file called out and it is gone same thing you can apply recursively on a directory also for example ls minus ld test ls minus l test so the test directory is having this permission the file is having this permission assume I want to give a permission called 753 and how I'm going to give it I'll say chmod 753 on a directory test but I want to do it recursively so I'll say minus capital R now if I check out ls minus ld test owner is having full permission group is having read execute and others is having write execute check the contents ls minus l test you see the file is also carrying same permission so like that you can apply permissions either in symbolic way or in numeric way people generally prefer giving numeric way as it is simple you don't have to type equals to plus minus these that just calculate a number and push it and it is going to apply it on your file or directory in the same fashion now guys we've got one more thing over here that is called as U mask. So, what is this U mask or Unix mask? Generally, guys, when you create a file or when you create a directory, you see that it is automatically getting some permissions though you are not assigning that permission while creating but as you create a file or directory it automatically gets some permission so how come your directory is getting those permission or your file is getting those permission let me show you for instance I'll create one file called PERM perm and you check it out ls minus l and this permission file you see I have just created a file but it is getting the permissions by default I have not asked it to give read write or read or read but it is getting on its own similarly you try creating a directory for example my dir check out the permission ls minus ld my dir so you see after creation of directory it is automatically showing some permission read write execute read execute read execute so how come it is happening that these files and directories are getting permissions automatically this happens because of umask so what is this umask and what is the current value of umask it is having if you just run a command called umask it will show you some four digit values 0, 0, 2, 2. so I'd like you to skip the first zero this belongs to special permissions which I don't want to talk now 
because as when we go for user administration session, we'll talk about this first zero. So as of now, assume that the UMask value is 0 to 2. So how come this 0 to 2 is managing to have different permissions? Let's find out. Let me again go back to Notepad. You see, guys, for any file or directory, the maximum permissions what you can have is 777. In this case, first I'm talking about file. That what default permission the file will be having with this UMask value. The maximum permission what a file can have is 777. But there is a rule in our Unix environment that a file cannot get execute permission by default. When you create a file, it cannot get execute permission. Whatever you do, it is not going to get execute permission. When you copy a file from outside, it is not going to get execute permission. See, that's the rule to prevent some scripts to run on their own. Sometimes what happens, guys, even the viruses that affects your system are mostly in the form of script. And as I've told you, a script to run requires execute permission. If execute permission is catered freely, then the scripts may execute on their own and they can damage your system. So that's the reason Unix never provide execute permission by default. So in any circumstances, when you create a new file or copy the files from outside, it cannot have execute permission by default unless until we assign it manually by using chmod command. So the maximum permission now, what it can have, I am going to remove 111 from it because it is not going to get execute permission by default. So the maximum permission, what our file can get is 666. I'm sorry, let me correct it. So for a file, the maximum permission when you create or copy can be 666. If you subtract 0 to 2, that is your UMask value out of it, then what is the answer you are going to get? 6 minus 0 would be 6. 6 minus 2, 5. 6 minus 2, 5. So what does that 6 five five or sorry six four four my mistake so what does that six four four would be getting guys here six means four plus two that is nothing but read as well as write four read another four is read. So when you create a file, your file should show read write for owner, read for group, and read for others. If you check out when you created the file called permission, P E R M, you see it is carrying the same permission for group. It is showing you read and write permission. For group, read permission. For others, read permission. User having read write, group having read, others having read. So this is how it is getting its default permission. Now what would be the case when we talk about a directory? So if you see a directory, for a directory, execute permission is very important. So by default, Unix grant that you can have execute permission for a directory by default. Because without directory, without execute permission, 
people cannot enter into the directory so it is mandatory to have execute permission on a directory so if I say for a directory the maximum permission I can have is 777 no minus because execute permission can be granted it is allowed if I minus 0 to 2 the u mask value then the final answer I'm going to get over here is 7 5 and 5 where 7 is 4 plus 2 plus 1 which is nothing but read write execute whereas 5 is equals to 4 plus 1 that means read and execute the same thing below 5 is equals to 4 plus 1 which is nothing but read and execute so if you see when we have created this directory my directory ls hyphen ld my dir you can observe over here that it is carrying the same permission read write execute read execute another read execute so like that this u mask will set a default permission whenever you create a file or whenever you create a directory because of this u mask it is going to get the default permission Now the question here is can we change this u mask value of course you can change whatever value is needed for you whatever value you want to make it you can make it there is no problem at all generally we don't do it but yes if you want we can change it for example I'd like to change my value of u mask from 0 to 2 to 0, 0, 2. To change the u mask value, we've got command u mask. I'll say 0, 0, 2. Earlier it is 0, 2, 2. Now I'm giving 0, 0, 2. Check out the u mask value. It has changed. Now what changes it is going to give me? Let's find out. So if you see, guys, for a file, now what permissions I'm going to get for a file the max permission is 666 and the u mask I have set is 002 the answer I'm going to get over here is 664 that means read write read write and read so the new answer what I'm going to get over here is read write read write and read let us test it out I'll create a new file over here for example touch new file check the permissions ls minus l new file ls hyphen l new file and you see it is exactly getting the same permissions what we have calculated read write read write and read so if you check out read write read write and read let's calculate the same thing for a directory so if you see for directory what permissions it is going to show now 0 0 2 so it would be 7 7 5 5 7 7 5 5 means 4 plus 2 plus 1 that means it is going to have read write execute read write execute then read execute let us create a new directory and test it mkdir new dir check the permissions ls hyphen ld new dir so it says read write execute read write execute and read execute so this is how a u mask value is going to impact your default permission so whatever value you need just do a small calculation and set your u mask value a 
A question from Francis. So when you create a file or directory by default, umask is assigned. If you change the umask permission, it is permanent. So the first question let me answer. When you create a file or directory by default, a umask is assigned. Yes. So when you create a file according to umask, it is going to assign. And when you change the umask permission, it is permanent. So I think that you are asking that if I change the umask value, is that umask value going to be permanent or the permission what is applied that is permanent? The umask value is permanent or not? Okay, I got your question. No, it is not permanent. What we need to do is we need to update one more file in configuration which makes it permanent. Now, which is that file? I'm going to explain you in a short moment. So as the question asked that uh, changing the umask value over there, is it going to be permanent? So the answer is no, it is not going to be permanent. It would be a temporary change. Then how come I can make that umask value permanent? So if I say umask, my current umask value is 0, 0, 2. And this is a temporary change. To make it permanent, you have to update a file etc profile. So when we go to etc profile, in this particular file, uh, actually it's a long file. And if I go below, below, yeah, there is an option available here if you can see. Umask is 002. This is the current value what I have changed. And below, you see there is a value 022. Now, if I want to make it permanent, then I need to change this value also to 002. It's a VI editor what we have used. So I can press I, go inside it, delete 0 and type, uh, delete 2 and type 0. Or I can simply replace a single character by using R. I can say R and new letter, R and new letter, R and new letter, anything. So one character can be replaced like that in VI editor. So now this umask value has become permanent. So did you understood the uh, understood this guys that how to make uh, a umask value permanent? Okay. Let's talk about few more important basics that you can use can be helpful. For example, how to see history of the command so far what you have executed. You can run a command called history and when you go for this history command, it will show you all the commands so far you have executed. For example, the output is quite big. I'll run history, type more, and when you run this command, it will show you the history of what are the commands so far you have executed. So all these commands you can view. Not only you can view it, but what you can do is you can re-execute this command. How? For instance, I want to take one of the command from history and I want to repeat it. For example, I'd like to repeat command number 389 that belongs to ls hyphen ld test. The number is 389 and I'm going to run that. I need to use exclamatory mark and the command number. The command number is 389, I guess. Yes. So I'll say command number 389. 
you see it is going to repeat that command for me ls hyphen ld and test where it is going to run the last command whatever you have run for example similarly you would like to run another command go to history in history for example you wanted to run command number 412 then I can say exclamatory 412 it is going to repeat that particular command even if you don't remember the history number you can use the half words to run that particular command for example I want to run the last ls command I'll go with exclamatory ls so you see the last ls command what I have run is ls hyphen ld similarly I can say exclamatory mkdir the last mkdir command you see it has run mkdir new dir already the same name directory exists so it is not going to create it again so like that what we can do is we can repeat these commands which have been recently executed by using that exclamatory mark also let's say you don't want to keep this history you want to clear this history and how I'm going to clear this history let me show you so let me clear the history I'll say history it is displaying all the history now if I say history hyphen C and just run history command you see history is now history all the thing has been gone and only recent command what you have run history is being repeated so I have cleared all the history so far whatever I ran till date so like that you can work with this history command also guys there is one more important thing let's talk about it we call it as paths guys so how many paths are there in our Unix environment and how to use them generally guys there are two paths one is relative path and the other one is absolute path so what is this absolute and relative path what are the differences between them assume guys you are in a directory root and inside it there is one directory called new dir so I want to go to that new dir I'll simply run a command cd new dir enter I am into new dir to come out cd dot dot so within a directory if you want to go anywhere you will be going with relative path that go into that this is simply relative path but assume there is a directory outside of your directory currently I was in root in root there is a directory new dir so I ran cd new dir it went into it if you remember guys in our previous classes we talked about few important directories of our system those were those were your uh, root boot etc usr opt tmp bin now how to go to this directory how to access these directories if i simply run like relative path what we have done if I simply run CD OPT it says there is no such directory and why not you see in your root directory is there any directory with the name OPT is there any directory with the name TMP no it is not inside it it is outside of your directory so if you want to go to OPT from your directory now you have to give it an absolute path a complete path from where to start and how to find OPT assume guys it's very much simple like 
somebody came to your building and is asking that where is flat number so and so so you can say go to third floor there you can find because it is in the same building but when you want to show somebody the route for some other place like you have to go to that particular building in that you need to go to third floor then you have to explain them the exact path that how to approach that building where is that building and where is that third floor so here you need to give an absolute location that is you need to say the cd command first go to slash the mother directory of all inside it go to opt now you see i have changed it to opt now again if i want to come back to my previous directory cd that's my uh, home directory if i want to come back to my home directory cd so like that guys you have to tell it for example i want to go to a directory called rh and this rh directory is sitting inside opt so how to go to rh directory i'll tell the absolute location i'll tell the cd command that go to root or slash directory inside it there is opt inside it there is rh directory so you see i told that go to slash go to opt go to rh so this way of telling a path is called as absolute path and absolute path always begins with slash from the mother directory like i'm trying to give it the exact location from start to end similarly relative is within the directory you are going to other directory inside your home you are going to any other room for example i'll go to opt now inside opt i am in opt i want to go inside rh now i'm already in opt so i'll say cd rh and you see i have changed my directory from opt to rh so here i don't have to tell it absolute path relative path is okay and to come back to home directory again and again cd just type cd it will throw you back to the home directory of the user with which you have logged in also guys i want to move back to the recently left directory if you remember i was in opt and rh and then i changed my directory to root so i want to go back to my last left directory the shortcut to go back to your recently left directory is cd hyphen when i hit enter you see guys it took me to my recently left directory that is opt rh again you go anywhere and you change your directory to some other location for example i go to etc and uh, there might be a directory called sysconfig there might be a directory called uh, networking scripts i came inside it such a long route i have taken now i'll say cd to go back to my home directory if i again want to go back to the last directory cd hyphen it will take me directly to my last left directory so these are the shortcuts guys that are going to help us in order to uh, make our work simple and easy also guys there is one more direct one more uh, concept if you remember at the beginning of our session in fact the beginning of our introductory class or uh, basic class i have told you that unix is not captive usage where it is going to prompt you every time that don't do this or you are going to make a mistake like this excuse me give me a second guys 
so i was telling that guys that uh, this unix is not a captive usage where for every action it is going to stop you like while removing a file it is not going to ask you that do you really want to remove yes or no or while copying or while overwriting it is not going to ask you but if it is not going to ask me then how come it is happening here when i say rm hard you see it is asking me that do you really want to remove and you have to say yes or no in order to continue similarly if i say copy hard data on out file it is prompting would you like to do it or not so how come it is happening that it is prompting when unix does not prefer to do this how come linux is allowing me to do this the reason is still linux follows the same rule same criteria that it does not allow us to uh, it does not give us all that prompting but what these people have done like most of the time we are humans and we may make such mistakes so to prevent that they have created something called aliases so if you look for this alias you see guys that when you run cp command it is actually running cp hyphen i where i stands for interactive basically cp command is not interactive but here they have made an alias that is actually uh, working as an alias guys that is actually uh, making it work like an alias so if i say ll command you see guys it's a shortcut for ls hyphen l if i say l dot it is shortcut for ls hyphen d something like that so if i say mv it is mv hyphen i if i say rm it is rm hyphen i so basically what happens guys that they have created this alias command so when i execute cp it works as cp hyphen i i am not adding that interactive field to it but it is getting added as a default thing generally what happens guys in unix is if you want to do anything interactively you have to add interactive option and then you have to run the command but here what happens is even though i am not adding it it is getting acting as that because an alias is created so these aliases would be helping me to not to do anything randomly and if i do it by mistake there is a chance for me to stop though unix is not that kind of os the question here is can i also create this alias of course you can create alias with any name anything whatever you like to do for example uh, i wanted to create an alias with my name musab for example i want to create alias musab and whenever i say musab it should execute a command called clear done check it out alias you see it has added an alias called musab and now when i run this command and i'll say musab you see it is working as clear command so basically i have just created an alias musab is not a standard unix command but whenever i am running it in the background it is making it run as a clear command and to unalias it we've got a command unalias musab now if you check it out you see that command is gone to make an alias alias name equals to what command you want to run to unalias just unalias and the alias name and again making this alias may not be permanent you have to put this information in etc aliases so where you have to put this uh, alias information like what command what you would like to make it so like that guys we can work with uh, unix basics basically there are many things inside it what we can learn it's an ocean in itself and uh, a question here is how can i learn it then 
the very simple answer over here is guys with any command whatever command so far we have learned for example umask command how to know more about umask you can say umask hyphen hyphen help so it will tell you that what options with umask you can use or even more detailed output if you want to check out even more detailed literature you want to read then use man command man stands for manual pages guys guys whenever you purchase anything almost all with every electronic device be it a watch air condition television wash or anything you may get a manual how to use it so in our unix there is a manual which we can use for every command you just need to say man you must and it will show you the manual pages how to use you must and the files related to it what we can do all that thing it is going to give you a whole big thing to read out and if you don't know how to use man then you can say man man it will tell you that how to use man pages any command it might be to come out of it we have to use q q to quit any command whatever it might be for example man cp command it will show you how to use it and if we go to the bottom you can see it will uh, give you examples also over here and then it will suggest you what other things you can look into so there are many things guys what we can do you can say man ch mod it will give you options how to use it it will give you examples how to work with that and also it is telling you that you can read one more page related to ch mod that is ch mod 2 to use it we can say man ch mod 2 and it is going to open still it is ch mod 1 Mm -mm -mm. let me say man 2 ch mod yep this is proper you see now i am on ch mod second manual so where if i go below it will give me some scripting kind of details it is giving me that how to do that and this errors what they have find many things it will give you one command may give you many other things that what you can find what you can search and what you can explore so if it is carrying any number then you can say man number and whatever it might be so like that you can find out more details about it you can learn about it and you can work with that guys so if you have any questions guys that you want to put forward most welcome you can ask the questions guys anything if you have not understand or anything which you want to ask so this confirms the end of our basics completely we have finished the basics today and tomorrow we'll see the next concept whatever might be available so as far as today is concerned guys the basics are completed we'll stop here thank you very much guys see you tomorrow have a nice day